In this video, I talk why just one challenge is not the answer. Let's go into, uh, we, we're always touching on topics that we come across or that we've been asked about or that I just see as a whole. And I know that, and I'm not knocking them whatsoever uh, as far as challenges are concerned because you see a lot of six week, eight week, 12 week challenges. I think now it might be time that people start calling them something different because if I see another challenge again, it's just, it's been beaten to a pole. But I first of all want to talk about the positive benefits of doing a challenge because a challenge not only you get that community feel within whether it's a gym or an outdoor facility or whether it's a personal trainer doing a group session is that you get that the, the communal push you get other people who are on the same path as you there's nothing it's like having a training partner but multiple training partners it's just really good knowing that you've got that group of people you don't want to let them down you get in you've got your certain scheduled times and you get in and do it so the whole idea of that as well, and whether it be six, eight, or 12 weeks, is to ingrain the habitual pattern of training, food, lifestyle, integrating it in there so that you've developed these habits over a certain period of time to set you up for what's to come. Because people think that that's the end. Okay, you know, wow, it's all, man, you know, six, 12 weeks, whatever it may be, it's all just, magically going to happen and I'm going to have this amazing body and I'm going to be able to keep it for good. And this is where obviously the post challenge care and something I'm really passionate about because I see so many people falling to pieces after they've done something like this. And obviously, you know, to the extreme on the bodybuilding stage or women and men dieting for long periods and you see the post comp rebound, this also happens when the general pop uh, have got things like challenges that they're doing where unfortunately they fall off the wagon after that time period. So I think nothing but positivity when it comes to participating in a challenge, but unfortunately people really come uh, or, or tend to fall apart lifestyle related because there, there's that, that goal that they're lost in limbo. You and I both experienced this after at certain dieting periods where you just, you, you're like, well, what am I sort of training for? The challenge is over. So I think number one, before that challenge finish, finishes, is to have a look and see if there's any events or something long term or the next sort of you know, eight to 12 weeks that you can set up goal wise so that you are not, uh, as you say, you don't have that lost feeling where you haven't got any direction or path or any training with a purpose. That's that's the big thing with it. So I think the most important thing for people participating in anything where they've got an initial time period and they're you know they're on a roll, everything's happening, is to make sure that they set up for the next goal when that finishes before it finishes. It's very, very important. Would you would you agree? Yeah, definitely. And do you think they need to be reverse dieting out of a challenge too? Because their calories are yeah. getting dropped. Yeah, so well that's that's definitely something and then again. If you're left alone and you go yeah. on a binge, you're just gonna Yeah, that's that's definitely something I'm I'm about to touch on with it, but yeah, the hundred percent hundred percent agree with it. I, I just think the, the number one before looking at any food, lifestyle, training is to have a next goal in mind uh, and have yourself set up because there is nothing worse than when you finish and you just you, you're not training with a purpose, you've got nothing to yeah. train for. Uh, it might be something simple as a as a get together, a Christmas party, a wedding, whatever it is. Pool party. Pool, pool party, <laughs> festival, whatever it may be. You've got to set that next goal, and I think that's really really important. So, moving on to where Jake was going with things as well is, I just wanted to explain what happens to the body when you die. The biggest thing you've got to understand, like I said before, when you are in calorie deficit, and people say, oh no, but it's calories in, calories out. Yes, initially, 
It is, but that baseline, as far as your body's metabolism or metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories your body burns to keep the lights on, that shifts. That shifts a lot, whether you're in a calorie surplus or whether you're in a calorie deficit. That baseline shifts because in the end of the day, if you are in a calorie surplus and your body's running on all eight cylinders quickly, it knows that survival is the key. So it actually learns to run more effectively and more efficiently. Digestion, uh, your ability to burn calories through exercise, it just, body's day-to-day -day functioning as a whole. Your body's calorie burning abilities become more efficient and you run on less petrol. This baseline shifts and starts to lower the longer you are in a diet phase. Again, there's many studies to prove this, but especially in the first few weeks of dieting, your metabolism starts to plummet. So this is, in theory, if it was calories in, calories out, you would never stop. Why do we stop? It's because the body's survival mechanisms kick into place to adapt and cater for the calorie deficit that you've provided. So one, you've got to take into account our, our metabolism or our body's calorie burning abilities start to decrease and we actually become more efficient and don't burn as many calories in the day-to-day -day functioning of our body. The other thing too, hunger hormones, uh, leptin and ghrelin come into play as well and this is obviously with the decrease of fat cells. Your body sign signals these hunger hormones uh, due, due to a survival state to refeed you or tell you you need to eat to uh, you know, put more reserve fuel tanks in there because just in case uh, famine's around the corner or it's, it's not at its, its comfortable level. When it starts getting below that comfortable level, that's where these hunger hormones uh, really start to kick into play, saying, look, we need to make sure that we store as much as we can and keep you in a nice, uh, even keel or, or uh, homeostasis, as they say. The other thing, too, is that hormones get affected through this time. Thyroid, testosterone, cortisol, all of these types of hormones that help with recovery, muscle maintenance, energy, metabolism, they all start to get affected as well whilst in a dieting period. This is where things of lethargy, recovery, uh, all those types of things come into play when you're in a, in a calorie deficit state too. And of course our, our, our stress hormone or cortisol can definitely wreak havoc in the body as well. So there's, there's many factors as far as what happens through a dieting period. And being in a dieting period for too long can have quite negative effects on the body when you're looking at progress. And this is where a lot of people come unstuck or stall or hunger gets the better of them, they start binging. So there's a lot of variables that come into play. I won't go into it, but you know, there's many methods that you can use in regards to diet breaks and refeeds and uh, uh, plenty of other scenarios. There's, there's so many different methods you can use. But let's just say you need a challenge for 8, 10, 12 weeks, whatever it may be. You know that all these effects have happened on the body. The body is basically in survival mode. Its job's basically gone, damn, you know, calories are low, exercise is increased we really need to keep survival at the number one priority here so if we have a, an advantageous stage where there's a huge influx of calories let's certainly take advantage of this and this is where following a dieting period or following a challenge guess what your body is absolutely primed for following that period. Fat storage. And guess what people do following a challenge or an end goal? Is they've normally got certain events on and planned weekend after weekend or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Planning all these events, they're feeling good, they're just, they're jumping through their skin and they're just like, oh, I've got to have this with my friends, I've got to buy my new clothes, I'm stoked, you know? We've all done this before. And being in that stage, like I explained, your body is primed and set up because your metabolism, everything is just in survival state and ready to basically super compensate and go into hectic storage mode. So 
what happens? You're so used to eating in a calorie deficit state and through this period of an event or dinners and alcohol, the calorie influx that you can have within a six to eight hour period is astronomical. I mean, Jake and I can put away nearly 7,000 calories in a two, three hour sitting. So you do the math as far as even a whole afternoon followed by the next day and maybe a Sunday breakfast, you start doing the math as far as it, and you jump on the scales and yeah, you freak out a little bit on the Monday, but you're like, nah, that's just fluid. Ah, it'll all be cool, I'll go down. Guess what? Your body's ability to store fat is amplified unbelievably to the point where kilos of fat can be stored in a very, very, very short period of time, okay? What happens when you're in this period and you've, you've put on this couple of kilos very quickly in, I'm talking a matter of days. Calorie restriction goes back into it, back to your normal uh, post or after challenge restricted dieting to try and diet the weight back off, but you've got a couple of kilos of body fat straight back on there again, but hang on a second, you're, you're a couple of kilos up if not more from your little events and uh, splurges that you've had. Diet down, diet down, diet down. A week or two passes, you might get a kilo of body fat off that you, that you put on two to three. Friday, Saturday, you've got a couple of events. You're like, yeah, no, I'm feeling really cool again. Bang, huge calorie influx once again. Guess what your body's primed for because you're still eating the same amount of calories as what you were before, but you're a kilo or so up. Boom. Exactly the same process happens, but instead this time you're three to four kilos up in a very, very short period of time. You jump on the scales on the Monday or two, oh geez, the weight's up a little bit more, and the whole process happens again. And guess what happens after this challenge is this person is stuck in a calorie restriction, binge eating period for a certain period of time, and in four to six weeks, this person more than likely ends up being the same weight, if not heavier than when they were then when they first started their challenge period, making sense as or can, I, I reckon 90% of people can relate, whether it be a challenge or just a diet. How many people have you spoken to or have we spoken to saying, yeah, no, I did my diet, but I, I, unfortunately I put it all back on. This is the whole process that tends to happen through that period. And Jake went through the stats of The Biggest Loser where uh, the stats were astronomical and there's even more research that shows that 95% of people who diet in a three year period, 95% of people put all that weight back on and two thirds of those people who put all that weight back on, two thirds of them put on more weight than when they first started. So does this paint a very, very, very clear picture as far as what is happening through this period and where I'm coming to as far as highlighting the importance of what happens after a dieting period? It is so important for people to understand. Yes, on the bodybuilding uh, competitor side of things, this is the reason why you see the post comp blowout. People put on five to 10 kilos plus in two to three week period. They've been extreme dieting for such long periods of time and their body's just set up and primed after this period and the binging and the hunger hormones, everything takes over and they can't stop. But understanding this to a, a better extent will help you understand what protocols need to be put into place through this period. You've got a couple of strategies that normally can be put in this period as well. Protein is that one macro that sort of doesn't shift uh, in, in the whole calorie restriction and surplus period. Yes, definitely for hunger re uh, reasons and feeling uh, satious, you can bump your protein levels up at certain periods, whether it be in a surplus or a deficit. But carbohydrates and fat, this is where following a dieting period, this needs to be crept up slowly over a period of time. If you are that person that you know that binging is going to occur regardless, it's probably better to do a slight jump. I'm talking 10 to 15% jump in your carbohydrates and fats 
following a dieting period to get that metabolic kickstart. And don't ever think that bringing your calories back up is going to have a negative effect on your body. If anything, it, it will actually re-trigger and kickstart your metabolism. And some people end up losing weight while bringing calories back up in, in their diet as well. So if you're in this period or you're following this calorie restriction and binging period, it might be an idea right now to set your body up to diet once again because if you're five to 10 kilos plus up and still eating the same amount of calories, you can't drop more calories and do more exercise. It's not the answer. Stress, hormones, cortisol, metabolic shutdown, these are all things that you can be exposed to uh, if you go down that red line danger zone of dropping calories too, too far. So for a lot of people that Jake and I have dealt with in this period, the best answer is to slowly creep your calories up. Do a once a week weight, hips and waist measurements so you know where things are at. And maybe over a three to six months period, work on bringing your calories back up to a certain extent where you can balance yourself hormonally, you can get your metabolism reset, and generally overall feel better about yourself and uh, internally energy recovery training performance all these things as well so following in summary following a dieting period the post dieting period is the most important of all so you need to understand where your body's at and it is a red line danger zone and the worst thing you can do is start planning all these events where cal uh, calorie influx is going to be amplify dramatically because this is where fat storage comes into it. You need to be smart, especially we always say that month to six week period following a dieting period and don't ever think just bringing your calories up slowly and this is another episode again, but slowly creeping those, those fats and carbohydrates back up to help reset the body, reset the metabolism and help balance and regulate hormones is the most critical period of all. And what I would advise is that four to six week period is, is absolutely tough it out so that you can bring those, those calories up and not be in danger zone where you're primed for fat storage as well. Yeah, so I, as you can see, it's something that, well one, I, I just see it over and over and over again and it's so disheartening because these people, you just see they're so motivated, they see all these results, they wanna go out and celebrate but they don't understand how much of a danger zone their bodies are in uh, in that particular period of time. And if, if you're holding a lot of weight, there might be a couple of dieting cycles that you go through, because when you get in that danger zone and your calories are really, really low, and you're doing so much exercise and you're re on really low calories, there might be a few signs, motivations lacking, energy, recovery, there's all, just tired all the time. That's probably a really good sign there, especially when you're doing countless amounts of of cardio and exercise that it's time to finish that dieting phase. Bring yourself back up like Jake mentioned with you know what we do with our clients. Bring them back up so that they're primed and set. Again, how long is, does this take? How long is a piece of string? It's so hard because people might ask, how long am I gonna diet for? How long am I in a reverse diet for? Or a recovery diet? Or a metabolic building phase? Uh, how long? Are, it depends. It depends because then also what happens is how far do you bump your calories up? There is a sort of threshold that when you bring them up, you're fine with clients or even yourself that you, you find that you get no change in hips and waist and everything's feeling good, but then you just might be five or 10 grams up, bang, just the weight starts. So you know there's a certain little threshold there. And each time you diet, you might be able to bring those calories back up again, but it's a, it's a great cycling period that you can use. And then, hey, when you're at a place where you're like, you know what, I'm really happy with my body fat and I'm, I'm comfortable with the way I look and I, I really wanna keep and maintain this, this is when then you need to find a balance between cardio and exercise and weights and food intake of what you can adhere to and maintain, which doesn't seem like a chore. So that's a little balancing act there, but my, answer to that as well is that when, when you walk in you go, no, I'm happy. happy yeah, it never happens, you always want to better yourself. So yeah, that, that's, that's a cool one 
like Jake pointed out in relation to um, the whole reverse dieting period, bringing the calories back up and it, it's a whole process and a lot of the guys and girls we've worked with, we've worked with for a long time now and they're in a stage where they're like, okay, I want to I want to work on here, I want to grow a bit, or I just want to cut for a bit, or it's, it's easy. It's really, really easy. So, so that's... Uh, I think the problem is they don't teach you that in the PT course. They teach you calories in, calories out. Yeah, and you've got to think, like, calories in, calories out, 500 calorie deficit, as they say in the, in the books. If you do that three times, you're on zero calories. <laughs> so it, it doesn't work that way. Like, the... the the shift in your metabolic baseline changes. You can do all the calculations on those internet calculators, but diet history, um, training history, all these things, food, food, current food intake, there are so many variables that come into place and there is no blanket solution. Everybody is different. So, you know, and that's where obviously Jake and I, the first thing we ask for is around seven days of food intake of what they're eating currently so that we can get a good gauge of where the sort of metabolic baseline is at to maintain their weight at that point in time. More often than not, it is, a sh it, it is just shit is hitting the fan left, right and center. It's all over the place. So the body then first likes consistency. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a very, very cool topic because that pretty much sums up 99.9% .9 of people's experiences through dieting. Uh, and, and what we're currently dealing with with the majority of people. And it's not a, it's not, you never think, oh, I'm getting too old or I can't shift the weight. It's, it's this exact process or um, continual dieting and falling off the wagon that makes things harder for you to, to shift the weight. So, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. awesome. Well, we covered. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, yeah.